and uh, call this meeting to order. Can we start with the roll call, please? David Crowley? Here. Marcelia Nicholson? Here. John Creepall? Here. One vote? Here. We have a quorum? We do. We have a quorum. All right. So I want to welcome everyone to the public hearing of the MATC District Board Appointed Appointment Committee, uh, during which the candidates will have an opportunity to address the committee, and committee members will have the opportunity to ask questions of the candidates. Does any committee members need any materials? All right. All right. So the purpose of this public meeting is for the district board candidates to give brief three-minute statements about their interest in serving on the board and give the committee an opportunity to ask questions of the candidates. Members of the public will also have an opportunity to provide information to the committee about the candidates. The Wisconsin Technical College System is permitting the MATC District Board appointment committee members and applicants to participate in the public and committee meetings electronically pursuant to executive order number 71, item six. The candidates and their speakers may hang up or leave after their testimony, but are welcome to stay for the committee meeting which will be held immediately after this hearing and during which the appointments will be made. Candidates will speak in order of the position that they are seeking appointment for, which will go by alphabetical order of last name if there is more than one candidate for the open position. The candidates category and the reference letter requirements will be verified by MATC's General Counsel Janice Falkenberg. After verification of status and references, each candidate will have three minutes to address the committee we will set a timer for three minutes and we'll start it once the candidate begins their statement. The timer will go off at the three minute mark and we will ask the candidate to please wrap up their statement at that point. Following the candidate's statement, the committee may ask any questions they may have of the candidate. After the candidate gives their statement and is interviewed by the committee, there will be testimony from the public regarding the candidate's qualifications. Each speaker will have three minutes to address the committee and they will, have, they will be called in the order of the candidate that they are speaking on behalf of. So are there any questions before we proceed? All right, so we're gonna start with our, our, our first candidate, uh, Mr. Dennis Myers. Can you please come up to the podium? You can, well, so, so head of the table. <laughs> head of the table. Head of the table. <laughs> there we go. Good morning, Mr. Myers. I just have a few, oh. <laughs> oh, yes, nice to see you. All right, so Mr. Myers, before we get started, I'm just going to verify your status as an applicant. So I just have a couple of questions for you. Um, you have submitted at least two written references for review prior to today's, to today's public hearing, is that correct? That is correct. Okay, and you have indicated on your application that you were qualified for the category of elected official and additional member. Yes. And you qualify as an elected official because you serve as a district trustee on the Germantown Village Board. Is that correct? That is correct. And you also qualify as an additional member because you reside in Washington County. Correct. Okay. Uh, Chair Crawley, this candidate's classifications as represented an elected official and additional member in his submission of references for review have been verified. Mr. Myers is eligible to serve on the MATC District Board. You may go ahead and begin your statement. Thank you, Janice. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Dennis Myers. Um, um, I... Uh, live in the village of Germantown and been a, a, a trustee for the village for six years. And before that, I was a Washington County supervisor for six years. And I also served with Don Crefo also uh, in that capacity. One of the reasons why I applied for this particular area is such because in my lifetime, I have helped a lot of different people in, in, in different capacities and so on and so forth. And, and so this would be an area that I had not actually worked on in the, in the past, shall we say. One of the things that was interesting to me was in regard to the president, Vicki Martin, basically speaking, what she came up with, with the two different programs. One was the Promise program, which was in the 
2015. And then in 2016, there was the, the Adult Promise Program, one of the very first ones in the nation and such. Those particular kind of programs actually help the students that do come to the MATC board to actually help in the capacity to start their career. This particular sheet that was given to me in the area of college facts and so on and so forth was very interesting. And, and uh, these are things that, that are there for you, which can't you know, stand in your laurels, like, oh, well, here's what we've done so far. These are things that you need to uh, try to attack and go further for and, and, and improve in these particular areas. Um, one of the things that I think is very in, in, important in, in regard to different things is that I, I've been pretty much a, a people person trying to help people. And I found that this is very much the case as being a trustee in the, in the village and as a Washington County supervisor. And, 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 and this being a, a situation where it's a learning place for per se. In fact, to be honest with you, in the last year, my second oldest granddaughter went to MATC per se. Um, but you know, knowledge, knowledge is is power, and this is the place where people can get that, adults and so on and so forth, helping the actual community to be able to have a, a situation where they can increase their knowledge and go into the world and become productive. Uh, adults, it's very important as such. Um, so I would say that for the most part, that would be my presentation, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you. Thank you for that, Mr. Myers. Uh, does any committee members have any questions uh, for the candidate? Um, I, have, I have one. Uh, um, Mr. Myers, what do you see as the uh, current and future challenges facing MATC and all technical colleges in general? Um, Don, basically speaking, where, the, where we need to actually go is that employers need to have a lot of different trades. People in, in the uh, um, area are, are, are going to be retiring. We need to have people in these particular trades to, to fill for employers as such and for companies who need people as was, was probably about six years ago with, for welders. We didn't have enough welders as such. So these are kind of things that are important that we need to have going forward as such. And then to work with employers, to get employers involved with, with MATC where students can actually be on the site, actually learning as they're learning the trade, and also learning at MATC. Does that somewhat answer your question, Don? Somewhat, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions for committee members? I guess I would have one. Uh, going forward into the future, how would you market MATC to the schools and to the students? One of the things in Washington County uh, was assistant dean, um, uh, and I forget her name, unfortunately, she retired just recently as such. I worked with her to some degree. She was working with the high schools in the, in the process of it, telling them what MATC actually has as such, and, and having somebody on this board also being from Washington County as such. So it's to go into the schools, to actually speak to the superintendents so they know what MATC offers at the, uh, at the Milwaukee or in Mequon per se. So, so they can actually consider, not everybody has to go to college, and, and they can still go to MATC and get other areas in nursing and so on and so forth. But these are the ones that kind of help the trades because there's more. There's a lot of there's a lot of in, in industrial uh, uh, businesses in Washington in Ozaukee County. These are the ones that need to fill those jobs. They came into the community, to put their money in to come into a particular place, and they need these different people. Here's a way to actually help them to show that. We want to have the students and then go into the schools and actually talk to them. You, you got to be careful when you start in, in ninth grade, I believe, to get these people thinking in that direction. Thank you. You're welcome. You know, I, I'd ask one question as well. I think when we, when we think about, uh, you know, when you talk about two year college or university, it's a struggle for many students 
to get through the system because of things. What do you think that we could do to support more students in, in, in ATC? I think one of the things that, that I alluded to from the very beginning was the Promise Program, uh, David. Uh, this is a very important step, and I th and think I think that close to 2,000 students have actually used this uh, since it was actually started as such. So it's an, another area that we need to continue working in in regard to that aspect and going into the high schools and letting them know that this kind of program is available as such and working with the counselors and the students themselves. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? All right, thank you so much, Mr. Myers. Thank you very much for your, for your, your, your thoughts, Bernice. Thank you, thank you for uh, taking the, the, the drive down as well from Washington County. <laughs> yeah. So it's good, nice meeting you. All right, next thank up, you. we're gonna have Mr. Supreme or Amakunde to come to the table. Here. Oh, <laughs> All right. Well, good morning. Good Welcome. Morning. So Thank I you. just have a few questions for you just to verify your um, application. So you have submitted at least two written references for review prior to today's public hearing. Is that correct? That's correct. And you indicated on your application that you were qualified for the category of elected official and additional member. Yes, ma'am. And you do qualify as an elected official because you serve as a member of the Wisconsin State Assembly. Correct. And you do qualify as an additional member because you reside in Milwaukee County. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Um, Chair Crowley, this candidate's classifications as re representing an elected official and additional member in his submissions of references have been verified. Mr. Akunde, you are eligible to serve on the MAT system. Seat District Board, and you may go ahead and begin your statement. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Supreme Mora Mukunde, and I represent the 17th Assembly District and um, in the state of Wisconsin. And today I'm seeking an appointment to the MATC Board because I believe MATC has uh, so much to offer the greater Milwaukee area. As someone who attended MATC and is now a, a state and former local elected official, um, I understand just how valuable MATC is to the fabric of the city of Milwaukee. Um, I envision an active uh, role um, on the MATC board in which we'll we will continue to meet the institutional challenges head on in order to provide the best possible education and tools for Milwaukeeans to succeed. Um, MATC really does have so much to offer folks um, around Milwaukee County. And I strongly share the board's passion for serving our neighbors. Uh, I envision my role on the MATC board, first and foremost, as serving as a bridge between MATC, the people of Wisconsin and the, and the state legislature. MATC is a bridge in and of itself, um, helping individuals, many from underserved communities, to gain the strong foundation of skills and training that they need to have successful careers. Uh, to continue to build MATC's profile, um, and available resources, I want to help enhance our skill building capacity and capabilities by offering my position and my connection as a state legislator. Any institution faces ch challenges, and, and MATC is not different. Our institution faces fiscal challenges, and the people we serve face economic and social challenges. Um, for us to succeed, we need a strong relationship with the state legislature, which is our main source of funding. Prior to serving in the assembly, I served on the Milwaukee County Board of Supervisors and I represented this area on the county board. Um, so I have experience developing large public budgets. Um, as a member of the county board's finance committee, I was intimately involved in developing the billion dollar Milwaukee County budget. And understanding the, I understand the importance of balancing community needs and taxpayers needs as well. Additionally, I think it's very important to improve the rates of Black employment um, across Milwaukee County, particularly for Black men. MATC can play a large role in that solution to that challenge. The people I represent need the skills that MATC can provide. I look forward to working with the board over my first term to find creative solutions to engage more Black folks and the residents MATC, uh, the resources MATC can provide. Finally, MATC will play a huge part in shaping our local society and economy in the 21st century. MATC can be a lead driver of climate justice in Milwaukee. 
As the co-author of the City County Task Force on Climate and Economic Equity, I envision that many of the green job training opportunities, which will modernize Milwaukee's economy, will come through MATC. I am familiar with some of the work that MATC has done surrounding climate justice, and I look forward to partnering with the institution to continue this work. Lastly, thank you so much for having me here today uh, and sharing a little bit about myself. And I am so excited and passionate to work with this board. Thank you. Thank you, Supreme Ram Kunda. Do we have any questions from any committee members for this candidate? I have one. Um, I, I like uh, you talking about getting more people involved and getting more people into MATC, into the technical school. Um, in Washington County, we're, we're working to try to get uh, more people actually come from the city to come and work and live in our community too. So um, how do you envision, um, you talked about bridging the gap too. There, there is that gap where people, um, you know, it's their kids are pushed to the four-year colleges and there a lot of parents actually uh, deter them from considering um, uh, MATC and other tech schools. How do you see your role to, bridge that gap to bring people and get more uh, enrollment? Well, we have to start listening to our young people um, because many of them have very innovative and creative uh, ways of achieving things and, and making money for themselves that may not involve a four-year institution. I have a mentee of mine right now who wants to sit down and talk about what trade do I need to go into because he wants to go to a four-year school, but he sees an opportunity in a trade to help him pay for that four-year education because uh, he knows that it will cost money and he wants to be able to make those dollars now. Also, we have to find out what these young people are interested in because they're depending on what you want to do, you're better off and you're going to be more successful if you come to a place like MATC. If you want to do music production, you're better off coming here. If you want to do nursing, you're better off coming here because MATC is going to graduate more people in their nursing program than other areas. If you want to do television production, they got, they got studios here. You're better off coming to MATC, depending on what it is that you want to do. So we need to really start having conversations and not just funneling people off into directions that we think they want to go to. Thank you. Thanks. Any other questions for this candidate? Now, well, being a fellow alum from MATC, <laughs> I, I was in here 46 years ago, so that's a little <laughs> while ago. So when I was actually one of the first ones to the Mequon campus that was still constructing when we started. Yeah. And they had a great program because they would have the welding teacher actually own the welding shop. So I really appreciate your passion on trying to get these kids to come to this school because you know what kind of a school it is. Right. I guess my question to the last candidate would be the same to you. How would you market it to the, to the schools and to the children? Well, I, I think the best marketing opportunity when you're talking about education as it relates to employment is which job is going to help you make the most money and, and the, in the most expedient way. So someone who is, let's say they're good with their hands in some way, shape or form, or they understand a certain technology um, and they can get training here as an electrical engineer or as a barber or as a cosmetologist, some way, shape or form. And they know that they can begin working, uh, being an apprentice in a program in the next year and a half, two years, rather than waiting four years, doing an internship and in something else that they might have felt that they were pushed into. Um, having that real talk with young people and saying, um, bringing people who are working in the field into schools and forming that partnership. I'm also... Um, a member of a labor group in the state assembly um, where they're talking about having relationships with uh, labor unions that go into schools and have conversations with them. They do that now. However, we've been really pushing it in the last uh, few months to making sure we're having conversations with those young people that they know that these labor group ex groups exist. These labor groups know that these young people exist so they can help usher them into their apprenticeship programs. And I think it's about having that information and them knowing what's available to them and what can help them make money to help them help their families, if you will, right out the gate. Thank you. Thanks. So I'm gonna go ahead and ask the same question that I asked as well. Okay. How, how do you make sure that we can support young people throughout their educational experience? Well, I think it's really important because we know that many of our students are facing economic challenges. Um, I think one of the things with the FAST uh, funding program is that uh, you had a lot of people who were, you know, 
they were may have been experiencing homelessness as they were trying to get their education here, or people got you know cold houses because they got their energy shut off, or um, they're double, tripled up homeless because they're living with family. How do we help to address those challenges that folks might have as well? Because um, it's one thing to have to pay to get books and to pay for tuition and to pay for supplies, you still gotta eat. And so understanding that those challenges that people will have as well, and understanding that uh, we can be here to assist in that regard as well. I wanna be very up close and personal and work with folks um, in that regard as well. Any other questions for from committee members? All right, thank you so much, Mr. Supreme Ramakunde. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, next up we have Ms. Medietta Ramos. Are you on the screen? I am now. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So I have just a couple of questions for you um, prior to you beginning your statement. Um, you have submitted at least two written references for review prior to today's public hearing. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And you indicated on your application that you were qualified for the category of employer member of 15 or more employees and additional member. Correct. And you qualify as an employer member because you are the owner and catering director of Antigua Latin Inspired Kitchen and Catering. And you also are qualify as an additional member because you died in Milwaukee County. Is that correct? Correct. Yes. All right. Thank you. Um, Chair Crowley, this candidate's classifications as representing an employer member of 15 or more employees and additional member and her submission of references for review have been verified. Ms. Mendia de Ramos is eligible to serve on the MAT system MATC District Board, and you may go ahead and begin your statement. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I am here today asking for appointment to a second term to this board. Over the past years that I've served, I've had the pleasure of working closely with the, with the board, with Dr. Martin and member of her cabinets on initiatives that have benefited the college. It took some time to learn how the departments work together and how things function at the college, but uh, I believe I got it now and <laughs> uh, I can help now even more. Uh, I feel ready to continue to serve and contribute to the success of the college. I've walked this uh, hallways myself as a student during my educational journey and I truly love METC. Um, I originally was interested in serving on this board because I believe that education, um, education is the key to grow a successful community. And I am fully vested in my immediate community. I like to see it thrive. I like to see the members of my community succeed. I know that I also know that METC wants to achieve the Hispanic serving institution status. And uh, at that time, I also realized that we didn't have representation on the board. We are facing many challenges currently at METC, and uh, one of them is being the decline of enrollment due to the pandemic, <clears throat> which is quite concerning to me. Now more than ever, I feel the need to continue to serve on this board to help move the needle and achieve the goal of attaining the Hispanic Serving Institution designation, which will benefit the college as a whole, not just the Hispanic community attending. The financial impact will be beneficial to the college uh, and to everyone attending. Uh, currently, Hispanic is the fastest, Hispanics are the faster growing um, uh, minority in, uh, in the United States, but also in Milwaukee. So I believe that now more than ever, it's important for us to achieve that designation. I am seeking a second term to make sure that this initiative um, and this goal of the president is seen, uh, is seen through. I look forward to the possibility to continue to serve you, and uh, I'm open to any questions that you might have. Thank you so much. Do we have any questions from committee members? Sure, I can start off. Um, talk about some initiatives to get more students, and, and you talked about the declining enrollment. What type of initiatives do you really foresee to gather? Um, you know, I, I want to see MATC, all the all our technical colleges. I want them to have a waiting list. Um, I want I want everybody to come here. There's there's way too many people going to the four year colleges and uh, just not even considering MATC. So what do you see as kind of initiatives to get people to, to, to really consider MATC and understand the value that MATC brings? 
Uh, definitely continue to communicate with the high schools. I think that we can even do a better job that we have been doing uh, to let them know that uh, we have programs such as the Promise uh, program that will help them uh, to pay for their education and also target um, adults that uh, are not able to come back to school because of that financial burden. Um, also, one of the biggest things that I don't think we're marketing enough is uh, having our guided pathways, because it is important for students to come get an education and make money and figure out what's going to make them the most money. But they also have to figure out where they're going to be happy and where they're going to thrive. If they're not happy in what they're doing, they're not going to thrive, they're not going to be successful, they're not going to be making money. So um, I think that uh, it is uh, imperative and for us to continue to work with the uh, high schools to make sure that that uh, they know what we offer and um, work hand in hand. Uh, also, again, achieving the Hispanic Serving Institu um, Institution designation will be huge. We need to reach uh, more of the students, bring them into the college. Uh, Hispanics is the fastest growing uh, minority. And uh, we also need to have representation in our classrooms too with teachers. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions from committee members? Yeah, I have one. Uh, Thank you for your service for the last term you've been in. I, I'm, I'm glad to see that you're coming and applying again. I guess my question would be, I know there's a learning curve when you have your first term, but what do you think was your largest contribution to the board in your last, your last term? Um, a couple of things. Um, Helping recruit a bilingual uh, instructor for a culinary department, I believe was one of them. Uh, working with the board to create a new mission statement for the college. Working with the board to make sure that um, the, pay, the new pay structure that we have uh, for our faculty or staff uh, was adequate and in place. Um, seeing the implementation of garden pathways for, uh, coming together. Um, I think those are some of the, the key points and definitely working with the, with the board to make sure that um, we were supporting our president and uh, helping her achieve her goals to make sure that the college was moving forward. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And, and you know, I'll just go right ahead. Same, same question I've been asking everyone. How, how do you think we can support more students in actually getting the educational experience that they need right here within the MITC? Um, there's more than one way. I mean, obviously, our promise program, uh, it's it's the, the most attractive, I will say, for current students to get them into the doors. Once we get them in through the doors, um, helping them through guided pathways, I think it's one of the best changes that the college has made because it's uh, helping the students identify what they want to do and how they want to go about it. Um, there's a lot of room of improvement for uh, the board and the college as in general. So the more that I learn, the more ideas that I have, but I know that there is a, a process, but for the time being, uh, I think that we can help and serve our students the most by uh, also supporting our faculty and staff to make sure that they are comfortable and they feel good about what they're doing so that they can serve the students better. Any other questions uh, for this candidate from committee members? All right, thank you so much, Ms. Medieta. I hope I said your name right, Medieta Ramos. <laughs> Medieta Ramos, yes, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, uh, and this will be our, our last candidate who will be speaking, Ms. Burris. Are you available and are you on screen? I am. Um, I will first like to apologize for not being in person. I did want to be, but um, felt ill this morning and thought it was best that I stay away from everybody at this point. But thank you for having me. Thank you. All right, thank you, Ms. Burris. And I'm just gonna have a couple of questions for you here. Um, you have submitted at least two written references for review prior to today's public hearing, is that correct? Correct. Okay, and you have indicated on your application that you were qualified for the category of additional member because you reside in Milwaukee County. Correct. All right. Chair Crowley, this candidate's classification is representing an additional member and her submission of references for review have been verified. Ms. Burris is eligible to serve on the MATC District Board and you can go ahead and begin your statement. Thank you. Um, I come before you today seek an appointment as an additional member. As a proud graduate of MATC Human Service Program, I am committed to MATC and its mission. 
I am living proof that an MATC education transformed lives. I'm seeking this opportunity so that I can give back to the college that helped transform my life. I was born in prison and have been a lifelong resident of the zip code 5206. Like many MATC students, I was raised in foster care and experienced homelessness while attending MATC and was the first in my family of 11 children to graduate from college. I believe that my experience will enable me to bring a unique and valuable perspective to the MATC district board. While a single parent student at MATC, I was active with the student senate, the black student board, and the Latino student board. I also volunteered with the MATC Fast Fund, a nonprofit organization that provides emergency assistance to MATC students. I successfully completed my human service internship with the FAST Fund and continue to work with this group today, serving as secretary of their board of directors. After graduating, I worked at Social Development Commission as a lead intake specialist in the emergency housing division, where I led a team of 25 employees providing emergency and rental assistance during COVID-19. In this capacity, I developed SEC's rental assistance processes and training programs still used today. My office was located in the very same building where I, as a child, had supervised visitation with my mother in foster care. I am currently at Community Advocates working as a quality insurance case manager, approving and reviewing applications for rental assistance. My work and life experiences have helped given me a unique um, insight into how housing insecurities negatively impacts MATC students' ability to complete and achieve their educational goals. I am pleased to say that Ann Wilson, a retiring district board member from a similar background, recognizes this and is supporting my appointment to the board. I'm excited that um, MATC has uh, established a housing resource center or a student resource center uh, for the college and they are proactively addressing the students' basic needs and securities. It is in efforts like this that have helped me realize how important it is for MATC to, um, to have a board member with my background, um, so someone that understands student basic needs and struggles. In that spirit, I am applying for this position and will be honored to serve. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Burris. Uh, do we have any uh, questions from committee members for this candidate? Sure, I can go. Um, what do you, is it is is it Bria? Is yes, it, please. Okay, Bria. Um, what do you see as the current and then going into the future challenges facing MATC and technical college uh, in general? Um, MATC in general, I would say that um, lack of opportunity. Um, MATC's current makeup um, is majority African American or minority. Um, having access a pipeline um, so like uh, the permits program will be generally the best way to get people in those doors. Um, as a technical college, I, I would not know. I'm only familiar with the local um, issues as far as getting um, students into college. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from committee members? I pretty much answered it with Dom just asking my question, <laughs> okay. so I'm okay. All right, well, uh, I will I'll continue with my, my line of questioning. Uh, what can we do to support more students to, to get a great educational experience and actually finish? Um, I go back to my education at MATC. Uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs says that a person's basic needs have to be met before they can uh, fully succeed. Um, and like I said, while being a student at MATC, I experienced homelessness. Um, so to make sure you cover a person's basic needs um, before you can fully educate them um, would be the best way to ensure that, you know, the college has a continued success with retention um, and just getting people through the doors. All right. Any other questions from committee members? All right, thank you so much, Ms. Burris. Thank you. All right, I will now call in order of the candidate interviews, members of the public to speak on behalf of the candidates in order of the candidate interviews. Are there any members of the public that would like to speak on behalf of either candidate? Do we have folks? 
So let's, I'll go in order. So anyone speaking on behalf of Dennis Myers? Okay, any, any members of the public speaking on behalf of candidate Supreme Mora Mukunde? Are there any can, uh, candidates, any uh, public members uh, speaking on behalf of the candidates of Italia, uh, Mediata, Romas? Mediata, excuse me. All right. And do we have any members of the public speaking on behalf of Ms. Bria Burris? All right. I guess we'll move, continue to move on. Uh, you wanna? Sure. So um, we did add to the agenda for today's meeting um, discussion on a possible action on the tie rate breaking process. As you know, we have four committee members and in the past um, we have had situations in which we have had a tie vote on uh, the appointment of candidates. And there was a request last year to try to explore what other options we may have other than to just keep voting until somebody um, went to, to another uh, possibility. So we've um, did some research into that and we've uh, talked with the state as well, the WTCS um, uh, administrative office. And so we have a couple of options to bring to the committee today. Um, as you know, in the past, we've just kept voting until um, we've come to a majority vote. But there are two other ways in which we could uh, manage that going into our next meeting in which we will appoint the uh, members to our board. So if there is a tie, uh, the chair could flip a coin or draw a name, and then the committee of members agree to vote for the applicant who wins the coin toss or whose name is drawn. The tie breaking process could occur after a number of tie votes. So for example, if you had two or three tie votes, then you could choose to flip the coin or do the draw. And then the committee members would all agree then to vote for that particular candidate. The second option is uh, the committee um, continue to vote for uh, up to three or four times, whichever the committee decides and uh, continue to go in that, that regard. And then if you cannot reach a decision, you would have 30 days to meet again and re-vote. If after 30 days, you still can't make a decision, we would turn it over to the Wisconsin Technical College System Board to make the appointment. But the same, the, all the candidates would be um, uh, there as well for the, board, for the board to make their decision on that particular um, placement. So um, if you'd like to engage in some discussion, uh, I'll turn it over to Chair Crawley and, and have the discussion with the committee. Well, thank you. Um, so yeah, I remember last year it was a few rounds. And so I think this is a, a timely discussion for us to have. We'd love to get the input uh, from committee members on the, the type of process they would like to see. Um, you know, when I think about this, I, I think about our board, I think about this process. I think that we, we always get great candidates. I think it's always important to get them on the board as soon as possible when it comes down to making decisions. And so if I had to throw out there anything, I, I, I wouldn't mind, uh, you know, drawing a name or flipping a coin if we had a tie vote, but I want to open the discussion up to committee members. I guess I would be in favor of that because if we're locked in a tie vote, obviously two people feel strongly about that person, two other people feel that strongly about the other person, therefore they're both good candidates. Mm -hmm. And I think it, that should be the luck of the draw, flip of the coin. Or, all right. Uh, other members want to chime in? Uh, I think uh, drawing the name uh, make, makes sense to me. Um, I, I always uh, think a flip, a coin flip is kind of, <laughs> you know, reserved for, uh, you know, football games and whatnot. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, drawing the name, and I, I agree with Lee, um, we've had really great candidates. And I know we, we locked on uh, two great candidates. Uh, uh, I don't know if it was our last meeting, but um, I, I think it's important that we make that decision and not push it down the road. So I think a uh, drawing of names would be good. Is there a preference how many times you'd like to go through the tie vote before you would get to that point? Uh, any any discussion on that? I, I think three times is a, is a, is a good, uh, good round. I would defer to the chairman also. 
So, uh, so do we have a motion? Can we have, get a motion on this? Do we need one then? Yeah, why don't you I, go ahead and... Well, then I would move that in the future and to uh, handle tie votes. Going yeah, three times voting, you would do the drawing of names. All right. Need a second. Second, or can I second? You can second. Okay, can I second that motion. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 All right. I think I heard everybody, so motion passes. All right, so we now have a, a, a approved the tie breaking process. Uh, we are going to move to adjourn this meeting at this time uh, and get ready. But we're going to do a quick, quick break before uh, we, we, we do the vote so we can uh, stretch our legs out and, and possibly head to the restroom. So uh, meeting is adjourned uh, for what time is it? 946. 946. Uh, is 9.50 work for everybody? I will take that as a yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was really us. Yes. <laughs> All right, yeah, where's else going to go? <laughs>
We're going to go ahead and uh, call to order uh, the appointment committee meeting um, and call, call the roll. David Crowley. Here. Marcelia Nicholson. Present. John Crepo. Here. Ishlengo. Present. All right, thank you. So I'm going to uh, ask General Counsel Janice uh, Falkenborg to provide an overview of the board appointment process. Okay, thank you. And this is the exciting part of our meeting. So I'm going to go over <laughs> the legal requirements of the board appointment process. Um, and those are in your blue booklet that you did get before today's meeting at pages four through six. And several statutory requirements for the process and the committee are outlined in Chapter 38 of the Wisconsin Statutes, which governs the Wisconsin Technical College System, and Chapter 19 of the Wisconsin Statutes set forth responsibilities that this public body must adhere to, including open meeting requirements and public notice provisions, all of which have been met in the convening of this committee. Lastly, um, administrative code sections establish criteria and procedures for the review of the district board appointments by the Wisconsin Technical College System Board as required under chapter 38. Legally, there are three primary obligations of the appointment committee um, must satisfy today. Um, the committee must conduct a public hearing, which we just concluded, conduct a public meeting, which we are in currently to develop and approve a plan of representation and vote for qualified MATC district board members which we will do during this meeting and submit all materials to the WTCS board for their review to determine compliance and to approve the appointments. Are there any questions on the statutory and regulatory issues? All right, so we will move on then um, to the formulation and approval of the plan of representation. So I'll just kind of move right into that, if that's okay. Yeah, you can go right into it. All right, so those materials can be found on page seven of your blue book booklet. Um, the previous appointment committee uh, approved the current plan on March 30th, 2021. According to chapter 38, the plan for the Milwaukee Area Technical College District Board requires the following characteristics. Five board members representing employers. Three of those members must represent employers with employees with 15 or more employees. Two of those members shall represent employers with 100 or more employees. And two of those members shall represent employers who are manufacturers. Additionally, one member must be an elected official. Elected official. One member must be a school district administrator two additional members and seven of the nine members must reside in Milwaukee County. In addition, uh, chapter 38 requires that the plan of representation give equal consideration to the general population distribution in the district, the distribution of women in the district and the distribution of minorities in the city of Milwaukee. The MATC district is comprised of Milwaukee County, Ozaki County, Washington County, and a small portion of Waukesha County, as you will see on page eight of the materials. In the MATC district, 45.4% of the population is minority, and 66% of the city of Milwaukee's population is minority, as noted on page 10 of your materials. Based upon this demographic information, the current plan of representation <coughs> requires the following. Seven of the nine members must be residents of Milwaukee County. Two of the members from the city of Milwaukee must be minorities. Two members of the board must be minority. Three members shall be women. Three members must be men, excluding the school board administrator. And um, of the six board members uh, currently serving, um, based on that, uh, those characteristics um, of the six continuing board members, two members of our current existing six members are um, minor, two, of the, two are minorities, but neither reside in the city of Milwaukee. And in addition, two members are male and all members reside and all six members currently reside in Milwaukee County. So if the appointment committee votes to approve the current plan of representation, it will need to appoint two minorities who reside in the city of Milwaukee. City of Milwaukee and one of the three appointments must be male. Um, the appointment committee may change the plan of representation by motion of any member of the appointment committee. Are there any questions regarding the plan of representation? Any questions? 
All right. Well, I, I call for a motion to, to approve the, the, the current plan of, of representation. Uh, I think that when we, when we think about uh, uh, this, it, it can always be out of whack. We can be um, in compliance, we can be out of compliance based off of, of folks, but it looks like based off of our current plan of representation, we'll be able uh, to make sure that uh, we're representative of what our army says. So, any other discussions or questions on that? So I'll make a motion to approve the, the current plan of representation. I'll second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Uh, I didn't hear from the chairwoman. Aye. <laughs> Thank you. So based on the plan that you just, uh, just um, approved, um, that would require the following um, appointments. So we're gonna be appointing one elected official and we have two qualified candidates, Mr. Myers and Mr. Mora Omakunde. And we will be appointing one um, representing an employer of 15 or more employees. And we have one qualified candidate, Ms. Mendiana Ramos. And then we will be appointing one additional member. We have four qualified candidates, Ms. Burris, Mr. Myers, Mr. Moore Okunde, and Ms. Uh, Mentieta Ramos. If the, uh, furthermore, we have two additional requirements to fulfill for the plan of representation based on what you just approved. We have to appoint two members that reside in the city of Milwaukee. We have two qualified candidates, Ms. Burris and Mr. Moore Omakunde. And we have to appoint one male member and we do have uh, two qualified candidates for that, Mr. Myers and Mr. Moore Mukunde. Um, and again, before we uh, go ahead and vote for those candidates, we will, based upon the previous meeting, we will be um, approaching the tie breaking uh, process that we just approved in the previous meeting, which would be to vote for three times. And if there continues to be a uh, tie vote, then we will go ahead and draw the names from a hat and then all members will agree to um, uh, vote for that particular candidate. Are there any questions or um, any additional information you need on the voting process or the qualifications of the various candidates we're going to be um, considering for at today's meeting? Now for me, any questions from anyone online? No. All right. So we are gonna go ahead and put up, are we gonna do do we have the chart so we can make sure we're getting hitting all of our various categories sure. that we have to hit is just to make sure that we're all following along here. All right. We're going to go ahead and put that on the screen so people can see that as we go through the process. So I can start. Okay. Life going on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, perfect. All right, so I, I know that we only have one person from one particular category for the employee member of 15 plus employees. Uh, so let's start with, with, with that particular uh, category right now, which would be uh, Miss Medieta Ramos. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 All right, everybody's an aye. So I just want to say congratulations on your second term. Thank you. Looking forward to serve. Thank you. All right. Uh, next, I'm going to I'm going to go directly to to additional member. Um, please remind me how. how. <laughs> okay, so um, we do have three um, individuals are qualified for the additional mm -hmm. member that you currently still have open. So Ms. Burris, Mr. Myers, and uh, Mr. Moore Omakonde. Okay, so do we go through each individual or do we all just- Well, you open one? it up for nominations okay. and we don't need a second on a nomination. So you can, you can, board member, uh, committee members can- Well, I'll, I'll open it up for nominations for the additional member. Mr. Chair. Right ahead. Um, I'd like to nominate Bria Burris for the additional member position. Right. Thank you so much. So Ms. Bria Burris has been nominated as the uh, candidate for the additional member. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Ms. Bria Burris, congratulations. You will uh, be serving on the MATC board. 
Thank you all so much. Thank you. All right, and for our last and final uh, categories for elected official, do I have any nominations? I'd like to nominate uh, Mr. Moore Omakunde. All right, we just had a nomination for Mr. Moore Omakunde. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Representative Moore Amakunde, you will be serving uh, on the uh, ATC board. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. Uh, let's move to adjourn. All right. So uh, we have uh, finished our slate of candidates. Really excited to have you all serving on the MATC board. And uh, after that, I guess we'll move to adjourn. I'll, I'll make that motion if you need one. <laughs> I don't. I, don't I, I second it. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank you.